And today we're going to be taking a look at this really cool old electromechanical counter. We're going to see how it works and we're going to try to compare it to a more modern counter. Let's get started. Oh, wait a second. Hold up, guys. I just figured out that if I increase the voltage... Tanner, tech, tanner, tech, tanner, tanner, tech, tanner, tech, tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. Now, in the modern days, we're blessed to have counters such as this one that utilizes three CD4026 chips and three seven-segment displays. And the cool thing about this modern counter is you have a little button you can press and you can advance the numbers. Now, notice sometimes it jumps a little around and that's because I haven't debounced the button on the input, which means there's a little bit of electrical ripple whenever you press the button, which causes it to count up like that. But this modern counter is pretty cool. You can press it like this. It also has an electric reset button where you can reset it. It also has a display disable, which turns off the display. And it also has a clock disable, which means you can press the button and nothing will happen to it. You can even connect a modern counter up to a frequency generator, which allows you to crank up the frequency to as high as 2 megahertz, and it will still count all that. As you can see, it counts at 50 hertz just fine, counts higher just fine, 115 hertz. This entire uh, counter is pretty cool. It looks pretty cool to run with all these mess of wires around it. Of course, you can shrink this down onto a circuit board. But there's a lot of cool electrical effects you could do with this device. It even has this little decade counter. As soon as this hits 10, you can, it'll advance to the next number. And it'll light up this light, which means you can have infinitely many of these seven segment displays in a row together. But that's enough about that. Let's take a look at the old vintage piece and see if we can compare it to the new counter. As they say, out with the new, in with the old. This small electromechanical counter is pretty old. I got it from the electronics warehouse. As you can see, it runs on 24 volts DC, and it's made by a little company. And what happens is, if you put a voltage across these end terminals, and you just put one pulse, then it'll cause the digits on here to advance one click. Let me show you that. I think this even works with very low voltages. Right now, my power supply is set to 5 volts and it doesn't work. Let's see the voltage threshold at which it works. Oh, as I approach like 13 volts, it's stuck. As you can see, you can get it to move pretty quick. This is a very fun little toy to play around with, as you can see. The only issue with this is the reset button doesn't work. Uh, it just can't seem to work. I think I got a defective unit. So this electromechanical counter is pretty cool, you can advance it pretty quickly, but it doesn't necessarily have it, the cool features that the CD4026 counter chip does, like the reset button, the display, enable, uh, and the clock disable. But anyway, let's see if we can push this little electromechanical counter to its limits, see how fast we can get it to count. Now to connect this up to my frequency generator, this device takes a significant amount of current, so we're going to have to be getting an NPN transistor. I've got a whole bag of 2N3904s, it should work perfectly. To start this up, we're going to take a 2N3904 and put it inside the breadboard. We're going to then going to take a 1K resistor and attach that to the base. This is going to go to the function generator that gives the pulses. We'll then have the emitter go to ground. We can then connect the collector to one side of our electromechanical counter and the other side of our electromechanical counter to positive of the power supply. With everything set up and the function generator turned on, we can see how this works. That was my multimeter, sorry. Now, when I turn on the function generator, you can hear that nice little click of it turning. Well, this is at one hertz, once a second. Let's see if we crank this up. As you can hear, it's working pretty well. Now, I say it's time to max out the speed at which this thing can run. 
10 hertz. Oh, at 20 hertz it doesn't work anymore. It seems like 11 hertz is the max speed it can go at. Well, that was this little electromechanical counter in the reel. As you can see, it worked fairly well. It wasn't able to go very fast, but that was pretty cool. Let's take off the cap and see what it looks like inside. As you can see, the red button still doesn't reset the numbers, so we're just going to have to start at 486. But I'll set this down so you guys can see exactly what's happening inside while it runs. Alright, let's see this thing run without the cover on. That's pretty tricky. As you can see, the little solenoid has a little thing on it. As you can see, every time the little thing moves around, it turns the numbers. That's pretty nifty. It's just moving that little arm, and every time the little arm moves, the numbers click. Cool. Oh, wait a second, hold up guys. I just figured out that if I increase the voltage of the, my power supply, I can up the frequency. If I up the voltage to 17 volts, 18 volts, which is a little under the recommended voltage for this, and I turn on my power supply, you can see that I can crank this thing up a lot faster. Now 20 hertz is the minimum, and it can go really fast. What happens if I crank it up to 20? Whoa, that's fast. Now 22 hertz is serving it just fine. That's pretty cool. Now the difference is between this mechanical counter and my electrical, electrical counter aren't that different. Every time you put an electric pulse on this thing, it advances one number wheel, one position. Every time it hits a nine, it activates the next wheel, kind of like the decade out function of my electrical counter. Other technology may be phased out because it doesn't have as many features. It isn't as cool or efficient as newer technology. But I still like old technology because old technology has a certain aesthetic appeal. It is able to look cool in projects, although it isn't as efficient such as that electromechanical counter. I think that thing is awesome. I think it's a lot more cool than my uh, CD4026 counter, but each of them has their own respective positions in this world of technology. Thank you. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for next time.